Hello everybody and welcome to the second round World Cup match between Tiss123 and Andy Davo. Um, Tiss won the toss and chose to kick with the Amazons. Um, Tiss qualified from BB Tactics and does not play in Champs Ladder. Um, Andy Davo with the Dark Elves has a win rate of 77% in Champs Ladder. And qualified from Rebel. So... Yeah, it is with four rerolls, three, 13 players, not three. Uh, Devo has the apple, but only 11 players. Um, Devo went with guard on his blitzer, as I, I knew he would. Um, Shawnee thought he might take tackle to knock over Amazons, and I told him that was, that was crazy talk. And to be honest, it's arguable how much better tackle would have been. Because of the fact that he can go for, you know, frenzy blitzers to get knockdowns. Um, you know, frenzy is only slightly worse. Now, obviously, if Tis plays well, he's not going to have as many opportunities to frenzy. But, the fact, you know, frenzy can get knockdowns as well as tackle. And he's, he's got three guard for this game, Tis. So, you know, if you, if you don't have any guard, you're going to have problems. So, I, I it's not like I think guard was just definitely worse than tackle. Um, I think it's marginally worse than tackle in this match, and obviously loads better if he wins. So I don't, I don't even hate the tackle pick to be honest. Like, it's not as if it's just a fully greedy, stupid choice. It's, uh, it's absolutely valid. Really. Yeah, it's I kind of regretted not going guard on my catcher, but yeah. <laughs> I had I had it. I had, I had plans for him, so so yeah, you know, just a again not directly behind the LOS. If this guy gets knocked down, there's still a screen. If this guy gets knocked down, there's still a screen. So. Not going directly behind the LOS like some people do. And uh, just mir the zones mirroring the Dark Elves. Obviously, Dark Elves in no hurry to score. And the zones not really in a hurry to stop them, are they? They're quite happy to trade mighty blow hits with hits on dodge and blodges. Um, it's interesting because you don't really want. To lose your blodge garters, do you? So like, the blodge garters are a lot more valuable than the linos, but then they're also the linos can get knocked down by blocks. So he's gone quite aggro here. Hits the defenseless player and rolls the power. So he would have got payoff if he'd if he'd gone for the higher value player. So yeah, going all men's here. And certainly, certainly not a bad idea, you know. While, while, like, it's it's weird because Dark Elves, five of them have dodge anyway. So, they're almost as, as dodgy as the uh, Amazons, but with an extra plus one agility on everyone and plus one armor. So, kind of gone, yeah, kind of gone back. And th this is the weakest part, isn't it, over here? So, abandoning this. Risky without. I mean, this is the thing with this build, isn't it? Um, Andy Davo went for three dodge and one wrestle. Whereas he could have maybe he's gone for two dodge and, you know, wrestle block or whatever. But he has chosen to have a risky block. A risky, a risky witch elf to block with for the added, you know, dodges, which is, again, six and two threes. It's not really, it's not really right or wrong, is it? Um, certainly, if he hadn't gone dodge on all three, going dodge on all three means that he has to basically not has to, but basically has to use his two doubles on guard. Um, if he had gone, for instance, two dodge, wrestle wrestle, then his double could have come as mighty blow, 
on one of them and then gone to tackle Mighty Blow. You know, so for this game, maybe he's, maybe if he hadn't played this, you know, maybe if he hadn't played Amazons, he could have gone guard. And then if he was playing Amazons after that, he would have definitely taken tackle. Could have taken it on a on a non-dodge guy and then gone tackle Mighty Blow as an option. But by going dodge, he had no option but to take guard on both his doubles. Um, though he still could have passed up on, on guard, but yeah, I don't blame him for not. This is a big foul. I don't think, like it's okay, he hasn't had anyone removed, it's okay to foul, but that's a, that's a, after putting all that pressure on last turn to just give up the heat, um, you know, that's a big commitment over here, which is therefore leaving him weaker in the centre or on the left hand side, and it's not that weak, you know, it's, but that is a big commitment, isn't it? As it happens, he gets, he gets zero payoff, it's a gym foul, sent off for a stun, I, you know, I don't, don't think it was worth it, really. But still, he, the, there was no breakthrough on, really. So it, it wasn't so bad. But I think I would have rather been fouling a positional um, if I was going to foul. But I, I can see why he wanted, you know. Look, he might have just got a Kaz there. Looks a great foul then. Um, you know, he has got dodge and everybody. But then they're all armor 7, so if, if he gets a few guys powed or, you know, either non-blockers knocked down or whatever, you know, so he could have taken some cards, I'm, I'm not such a fan of that foul uh, but yeah, you know, once he's got he's got 13 players so I guess getting one person sent off is okay <laughs> but that, I mean, that's really all you can afford, it's it's very easy for him to take a random, a random removal so you know, Andy Davo has no tackle and no mighty blow and, and, you know, the weakness of Zons in this format is everybody's going to have a Mighty Blow Tackler. <laughs> well, not everyone, but a lot of people are going to have Mighty Blow Tacklers. So, especially when they know they're playing against Amazons, they're either going to have multiple Tacklers or Tackle Mighty Blow. Um, so, this wasn't such a bad matchup for, for Tiss, really. Playing somebody without any Tackle at all is pretty going to be pretty rare in the whole of the World Cup. Now, you know, if it had been the next round, he would have probably had two wrestlers with Frenzy. And he's still got two Frenzy to get knocked down, so it's not it's not terrible. So, yeah, he, and he is left a little bit weaker this side with that send-off and this base contact. If he'd had somebody in here, for example, there's no break through the middle. Like, there is a bit of a weakness in the middle here. Yeah, he needs the knockdown though still to, to make that weakness. She gets. So he's able to you know get a bit forward. Whereas if he hadn't been sent off, I don't you know, he could have shored that up and there would have been no no break forward. And now this gets tricky to defend, doesn't it? So yeah, really, did. I think this position is a result of that send-off. But you know, on another day, he gets the kill and doesn't get sent off. So you really can't do, you can't do results-based analysis um, in this situation at all. Gets the pal. I think this. I think you, yeah, it's it's hard to call here because by making the foul, see, so he gets he gets the removal there, which is all right, and doesn't get sent off. But he leaves this weak here, especially that this this basing I really don't like. Oh, let, let's go back. This basing I really don't like. I think if you put him here, it's really hard to, to break through that side. And then that encourages... Like, you know, it could have gone down the right-hand side here. There's definitely people there. But, you know, the fact that you can't ensure knockdowns... <laughs> if these if these weren't Amazons, you'd have a really good chance of knocking these two guys down, blitzing this one. And you could probably make a good good cage up here. But with him basing there, it just gives him the free assist to push him to there and then break through here. 
Whereas if he'd been back there, I think that'd have been a much better spot. So I don't want to call it a mistake by Tiss, but he did kind of leave this this breakthrough on, especially with him being behind enemy lines to, to go there and shore it up. And, you know, three of them have got dodge. So it's it's quite reasonable to expect that he passes everything here, Andy Dave. You know, obviously if he'd used the if he'd used the reroll and the dodge there it'd have been if he failed the dodge, he'd have been in a horrible spot and probably lost the drive. But, you know, good players are going to make make you do that anyway. You can't expect to, you know, not have to roll cr critical one in 36 rolls as always. And, yeah, now suddenly it's looking very, very bad for Tiss. And, yeah, you've got to say that it was the position of this Blitzer, I think. I think if... It would have been harder to have got such a good spot. You know, he's, most of his players are on this side, aren't they? So I think it would have been much harder for, for the Dark Elves to have pushed down in such a dominant fashion down this way. But he needs the power here, doesn't he? No, no, he doesn't. It's still a break. There's still a space. He would have loved the power, though. Because <laughs> the power there gets him onto here. But he can get some people back. But it's pretty horrible. Pretty horrible for the Amazons now. Pretty much, I think that was, I think that was the key, the key move there. Like this, this is quite good. He's he's based up these three, or or you could argue it was quite bad from Andy Devo to let these three players get boxed in like this. You know, so he's done a, he's done the bit of boxing in there. Now finally rolling some dice. Of course gets punished for like <laughs> probably the only GFI he's done <laughs> in the half. Um I can see why he wanted to base, but really it doesn't achieve a whole lot against the dodge guys. But this is quite good forcing well, three pluses or a blitz. So it's not that good. <laughs> Yeah, you can just go up there, can assist the block there. Oh yeah, but no one needs to screen, but still, could go here and could block him and then dodge him out and stuff. A little bit surprised, I would have expected. I would have expected more blocks and stuff there rather than dodging. I mean, this is a 1 in 9, so it's not a crazy dodge to do. But if I could block people free, I think it's better. A little bit greedy with the dodges and the GFIs and stuff. But works out, obviously. Is that a 4 plus dodge? Don't know what the idea was there. <laughs> but you know, there's no way he can get in the way here. I think I think this cage dive is, is actually fine because if he blitzes here and bases a bit, he's just He's just screwed, isn't he? Against agility force, so why not? Why not try for a one dice, pow, kill, ball, scatters back this way. I mean, there was really not nothing he could do there. Like, so, you know, maybe he should have just GFI'd with everybody last turn. You know, gone for a really crazy last turn because there was nothing he could really do to stop the touchdown. <laughs> Um, yeah, three dice there. Why not? Got a reroll for it. Could even try two dice blocks for attrition. Nah, no, not without block. So there you go. You know, perfect drive for Andy Dave there. It was that one little, little slip up maybe by Tiss, and it was exploited, exploited fully. So only twelve players now for the zone. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect any fouling outside of like witch elves, <laughs> you know. The other and the witch elf that came back as well didn't make the KO roll, but would have had two chances. So a bit, a bit disappointing from the attrition front, I think, for Tiss. You know, he's got mighty blow like like me in my game. The mighty blow only made one KO all game. Um, mighty blow hasn't done anything yet. 
so a touch disappointed but then also hasn't really had his armor broken which is you know although there's no tackle there is block hits that have come in occasionally and frenzy hits so and in a way really it's better when there's no removals isn't there because the Coaching comes into it more. But you would definitely have liked one. I mean, he's, he's paid a skill for Mighty Blow. He likes something out of it, wouldn't he? <laughs> so, yeah, movement six. Set up for maybe a riot. And But once there isn't a riot, absolutely have to make these three dice blocks, in my opinion. No reason really not to make these three dice blocks. You know, as it happens, <laughs> he gets the knockdowns. I absolutely hate this foul. With only with only 13 players, this is an exceptionally greedy foul. Because the best Tis can hope for here is all the time. So, you know, the chance to lose a player for really no real gain, he's going to 50-50 get it back to the second half anyway. Much better to save that later I think you know a high value a high value target now of course as far as the actual roll's gone he's a rookie get sent off ish <laughs> unlucky ish to get sent off about one in three to get sent off and pretty low odds to remove him for the whole game so both sides still with eleven <laughs> um, yeah Looking tricky for the for the Amazons, you know. This is a dark elf team with a full eleven has got a pretty good chance of stalling your drive out. Needs to get some removals. So you know you could argue that that's why he made the foul. You know, even if it had been even if it had been a line or removed, a lot easier to score against ten and. You know, there's no point thinking about overtime if you can't get to overtime. So, fair enough. So, Tis set, sets up pretty much correctly against the offset LOS. Uh, plenty of stuff on the other side to stop a breakthrough. Still a screen if he, blitz, if he gets a blitz and blitz as well. He gets the blitz. So yeah, even if he'd knocked this guy over, there would still be a screen there. So absolutely sets up how Bernie could have done. <laughs> um, this is how to set up against an offset LOS, not how to completely lose the game because of an offset LOS. Still maintains the screen against the blitz, though you know he can still dodge through with dodge players. Um, you know he could he could have set up arguably better against the uh, well not even arguably he could have set up better against the blitz, but. It's still good enough, isn't it? Better than most people would have done. If this guy was one square forward, um, I think it's better. If this guy is on the LOS, I think it's better, a lot better. But yeah, he, get, he gets the threat through still. So it's still scary. It's still really scary. I think what... Pause it here. Mm, too late. So the first thing he does is block. Um, and then he double, double skull. So you know, that was unlucky. But the first thing I think he should have done was move these two free players. He has got a guarder and a line woman free. I think the first thing he has to do is move those. I mean, he's making these blocks to free up the mighty blow guy. But I think you have to move the other two first. Um, you know, just to just to do something. Either, you know, cover the ball somehow or cover the backfield threat somehow. I think just making the blocks first to free up is pretty wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, he's going to block with a mighty blow and free the guard. That, that makes much more sense than what I just said. And I guess he doesn't know who he's going to be able to free up until he makes the other blocks. Gets a KO, but you still got to move. these. Where these two move is not affected by what happens in these blocks. Or at least this one. Maybe he would have moved this guy to a square, but he has to move that one first, I think. No excuses for not moving him first, but, well, there are excuses because, you know, there's, there's a lot of pressure and nerves and everything. 
Um, but you know. And then fails the first one in nine dodge. I mean, he had he had a lot of one in nine dodges to make this turn, and he could have easily made all four, but he fails the first one. Um, such is the weakness of, of dodges, rather you know, edge three dodge rather than four. But this is multiple ways now he can get the ball, isn't there? Probably going to go for the wrestle blitz. Don't think it's worth. Blitzing into an additional block is the double guard. I think I would have uh, pushed him here with the first one, so the power would have been there. Ah, no, it's probably better there than it's not in any tackle zones. Yeah, yeah, definitely right thing. And yeah, there you go. The re-roll gets the knockdown. Puts this guy in the wrong square there, doesn't he? That's in, that's in the wrong square. Now he's made himself do a dodge. Three, four, five, six, seven. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, so he needed a dodge anyway. Ooh, this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, he's made this guy do an additional dodge. So yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> He's punished for it <laughs> in the worst, <laughs> in the worst possible way um, by double warning and being cast. The apple worked, so it wasn't in the absolute worst possible way. Oh yeah, I was stupid of me, of course. That's two squares instead of three. So yeah, he, this guy should have done the re recovery, and this guy got in the way and made him do that extra touch. So that was a mistake. Um, and it was punished in the absolute worst possible way. Huge power there. Absolutely massive power. Incredible, incredibly lucky to get that. This witch elf is being a bit of a pain here. With a jump up threat. I guess he does have two guards next to her. But he's not out of the woods yet at all, Tiss. I would have I would have moved the wrestler here and then just been in a cage there I think because relying the two guards to stop her no oh, no 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 that's a bad idea <laughs> that's a bad idea this is a, this is still not good though like it's crazy how scary it is against even even movement seven elves you know they don't need to be movement eight and tackle and strip like wood elves. Even kind of oh, this is ballsy, isn't it? A ballsy sack attempt there, but the failure of it means that definitely Tis can move up safely now. So that was a bit all in there by Davo. Maybe, maybe he didn't have to do that. Um, maybe there's something he could have made that didn't didn't make things look so bad if he failed but you know that's arguable in it picky huge getting to mighty blow block mighty blow blitz and armor seven guys amazing um it was because he was armor well it was either because he was armor seven or because of the mighty blow you can make your mind up but yeah that is the weakness of the runner isn't it armor seven he's such a tempting target the blitz Doesn't doesn't get away. I think I would have got away over here there. Just because just because the jump up which makes everything so so scary, doesn't it? Like jump up kind of skill that I would never take by choice on on a on a player apart from piling on mighty blow. But it makes everything super scary. But yeah, there's so much guard over here. Even if he'd done the jump up one dice, it could have run round for a one dice or something, but makes absolute sense to, uh, you know, go cautious again. Conventional defense, if you like. Surprised by that, I think. 
over here would have been better. So that you could, you know, push it out to the sideline. I mean, he has pushed out the sideline. <laughs> but if, if, the, uh, if this was here, then you could have pushed out there on a push and then a power would have, or even another push would have put him, you know, in danger of getting surfed next turn. But now, because of the uh, going back to a conventional defense, there is the opportunity to cage here. In this square, perfectly safely. X cage, guard on both cage corners. Which is pretty safe. About as safe as you can make it versus elves. He instead chooses to push up and base the cage. Which... It's something I'm never really a fan of. It is turn 12, so, you know. Maybe he wants to push it with the time. And and also, you know, there is pressure and everything. And, and there's more, more than one way to skin a cat, so... I'm not saying it was wrong to not X-Cage at one square further back. This does let him, you know, it's a risk versus reward, isn't it? He does leave the 2 plus dodge out there. Which, maybe if this guy had gone here, it would have stopped. But even then, probably going to work anyway with elves, isn't it? A lot, you know, a lot of, a lot of this commentary is kind of being nitpicky or, you know, whatever. But it's not really, it's not really criticism, is it? It's, it's for the benefit of the viewers rather than, you know, abusing the coaches. <laughs> Actually, a huge one in six fail there, and with only having two rerolls, you can't reroll that. And the possibility of overtime cannot reroll that. That makes really easy progression over here, doesn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. And can't get that much forward, actually. So it's not that bad. But couldn't really got forward at all mm, without that. Could even GFI if you want. No knockdown for the Michael Blitz. But you know, he's he's got he's had, he's put some he's put in some work this half, down away players. The one was from a dodge fail. That would have almost won him the game, so But again it was it was his fault for blocking it, wasn't it? So That's a good lesson to not make, not make rolls you don't have to. I quite like this, getting a bunch of guys forward. Um, could have got the cage further forward than it was. But he's made a bit of a, a bit of a screen here. I don't like this blitz. I would have definitely blitzed this guy and then this one. Try to, you know, okay, you're probably just going to push them. But I would have definitely blitz, blitzed one of these and blocked the other. Use the guard and what have you. So it may makes all the rolls this turn. I mean, this is this is a fine turn, really. Because can't can't push through this this area. Has to blitz the witch elf, who does only have dodge for protection. So he's kind of forced down the sideline. Um, but the sideline is pretty open. So it's six and two three. This is six squares forward here, or five squares forward. Um, would like foul on the witch this turn <laughs> which is probably why you know one of the reasons why I wouldn't have fouled earlier um, I think because this jump up is it's always proper scary proper scary when you're trying to move forward and cage and stuff and uh, yeah I think maybe he's re I don't like this random tagging of a lino I think maybe he's tagging him or getting an assistant might be better just go for the foul. Doesn't work. So there's no real chain to get a hit on the ball here, I don't think. 
from the Witcher. So maybe not such an important part to go for. <laughs> In retrospect, maybe it could have just covered it here. Yeah, she just dodges out. Dodge with the dodge doesn't really get anywhere super important. Wow, that's a, that's a move, isn't it? There, that is a move. I think here would have been better. Maybe. Because then you've got a screen with this one. And it does leave you kind of open to pushing down the sideline. 100%. Because the guard could come in there and 2D... Well, this guard could come in here and 2D and then 2D down there and push down. So I can see why he covered the... Uh, the progression. Ah, he's got this one in here anyway. So that works out alright. But I can see why he wanted to cover the going down that side. You know, a lot of people do that double line. It does pretty much shut down going down the side. Gets the KO on the unprotected guy. So we're getting some value out of Mighty Blow now. But this is left open, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe both players could have been in there. One player here and one player here, maybe. Something like that. And yeah, that is now a gaping hole. Is having to base the cage on the on the witch elf, but then has loads of players that can come in. So yeah, I think he left the centre too weak there. But then he would have let he had to leave either the centre or the sideline too weak. So but I think you again you're more comfortable, especially with less players, having them funnel down the sideline than in the middle and can go either way now. Now it's incredibly hard to defend. He he's going to make a GFI but he can also go laterally one square as well. Nice cheeky pal. And a removal. Not bad. I hate this book. Right, okay, it's easy to say I hate it because he one in nines it. I even don't like the blitz. I think he can go laterally one square, so you've got a lot of ground to cover. A lot of ground to cover. Um but I think maybe you just try and go as wide as you can. Blitz this one. And then go as wide as you can. It's really hard to stop though, to be fair. But that block didn't really achieve anything. Even had it worked. Three, four, five. Do you know what he should have done there? Do you know what he should have done there? He only needs a push on this block. Should have moved this guy into here. And then the, after the blitz, he could have gone to assist the block on the Witch Elf. Because that's two dice. You know, it's not bad to make a two dice block. But he's he's only got one. He's only got three rerolls to the match. And he has to reroll. He has to have a reroll for the blitz, for the uh, touch attack. So I think that would have... Uh, I think he, if he's going to do that block, he should have made it three dice. And could have made it three dice. So I think... It's arguable whether the chance of attrition on the Witch Elf is worth it. It's not arguable that he just should have made it three times. If he was going to do it. But again, you know, look, I miss things in my game. I'm not banging on either player for saying they miss things. Um, it is easy to miss things in the heat of the moment. You know, pressure, tension, all this kind of stuff. Nerves. Um, but this, I think, is pretty unforgivable. You cannot cannot ever, 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 ever set up in a tight LOS. Um, this is the absolute worst anti-one turn formation possible. One square between them was so much better. You know, one or two squares, you cannot set up tight. And he hasn't even tried to stop the pushes. And a movement sev seven one turner is not hard at all. I've got one on my... Uh, on my uh, on my YouTube there. It's not, once you know how to do it, the only hard part is rolling the actual pushes. Um, he gets the quick snap and doesn't use it to move players, which is, I can understand why, because, you know, he knows how to do it with the, with the blitz and everything. Um, this is a crazy, 
insanity re-roll there. <laughs> when there's such a low chance of rolling all the pushes. Um, you know, that's an insane re-roll there. There's no, you know, there's no real justification for that re-roll. Um, but yeah, you know, getting, getting the pushes isn't really hard. Um, well, knowing how to push them isn't really hard. Actually rolling the pushes is, is a pretty hard task. Um, so he does he does make all the pushes though. Don't know why he moved that guy in, he already had the assist. Didn't didn't need to move him. But now he does. <laughs> So yeah, so he gets it. He gets it the other way, which is nice, isn't it? And you know, it, it's looking like it's paying off. But I mean, there's such a huge string of rolls when he makes the re-roll, and then bizarrely goes the wrong way there, makes a four plus dodge instead of a three plus dodge. I mean, you know, he had he had the he had the range to go down the sideline. Fails the last GFI. Um, so, you know, so it looks unlucky to fail the last two plus to score, but at the time the reroll was made, there were so many dice rolls to make. Um, unbelievable, really, to, to go for it. Um, you know, 50 50, he wins the toss, and then <laughs> with a reroll, he's almost nailed on to win. Without a reroll, he's not. As it happens, he loses the toss, and now he's almost, almost not got a chance because he hasn't got a reroll. But ten players, um, it's not, it's not terrible, really. You know, this, this, this can absolutely be defended with ten versus eleven. Though, the chances of defending ten versus eleven with a reroll, you know, it's, it's got to turn it over as well. Stopping the score likely won't be enough. And by the same token, the Amazons here are in the uh, are in the lovely position of just not having to force anything and not having to score, try to score against Dark Elves, you know. So what they can do is with a three to zero reroll advantage, they can cage up, and when there's pressure, they can just deal with the pressure, and they don't have to maximally move forward all the time. They don't have to try for a risky breakthrough. All they have to do is to play it as safe as they can. You know, safe moves first and just 100% safest cage of their lives. I probably wouldn't have even put both guard on the other way, so I'd have kept both guard for a guard cage corners. And yes, obviously they want to score if they can, but now that it's three to zero, they just need to score if they can without any risks at all. <laughs> Is, is the play for the Amazons now. But, you know, it was a good attempt at the one turner, you know, lots of people wouldn't have wouldn't have known how to do it, I guess. Um, but you know, he could have he could have taken advantage of the quick snap. The one the fly it would have been harder than something you'd rehearsed. Um, well not harder, yeah, you know, if if he if he knows how to do a, a movement seven one turner probably doesn't know how to do a movement 7-1 turner with a quick snap because it's not the same as a movement 8-1 turner <laughs> so I can see why he refused the quick snap but I think he probably shouldn't have done and in fact would have scored because it would have, it would have been the, the last GFI required but you know you can't say that at the end of the day it was still a, it was still a bad reroll uh, gone for a foul here which is Taking a risk, not something I would have done. Um, but you know, he's got the advantage and he's trying to push the advantage, which I understand. It's just not my way of doing things. I would, I would be like old Stevie G, <laughs> don't let it slip. <laughs> and uh, he's gone for pushing the advantage, which is fair enough. But you see this kind of screen, it has to happen. Be you have to screen like this because you can't let him score. 
but also you have to put pressure on because he can just stay in his backfield and cage up and be like, what up? I've got a three reroll advantage. About 90, over 90% 90 to win with a three reroll advantage yeah, on, the, on the penalties. So, you know, I can just cage up here. Fully safe cage, a, a screened cage and a cage corner and a guard cage corner cage. Um, so, certainly the possibility for an amazing formation here. Yeah, you could have guard cage corners and everything screened off. What he does do is he bases the cage himself, which I think, you know, fair enough. Look, it's overtime. Um, and, you know, there's nerves and what have you, but... I think to not have guard on the cage corners and to have not screened the cage now, maybe, maybe, yeah, he hasn't screened the cage, hasn't screened the cage, has based the cage and hasn't got guard on the cage corners. So that's pretty much, you know, I'm not going to say it's as bad as he could have played it, but it's, it's really, it's really poor. <laughs> hasn't screened there. So it can go straight through here. So he's invited Ton, hasn't screened here, so he's invited tons of pressure on the cage, which is really, really poor turn, considering how safe he could have afforded to be. Different if it was, you know, one reroll each, where he'd feel like he had to score, but the fact that he just doesn't have to score to win, you know, you gotta play, gotta play safer than that. Don't understand this dodge; it doesn't really achieve anything. Um, sure, you're giving him a free block, but it's either with a blotch, it's either with a block guarder, or it's with a rookie that he might have won in nine. If he pushes you, you're in that spot anyway. It didn't even go to here. That's a really weird dodge. But uh, maybe that was again Dave all feeling the pressure. You know, there's, I know, I know myself how how intense my game was. So again, he can he can guard cage corner and. Just make this block. The, the problem with this block is the witch elf jump up is a thing. Um, but he does have the guard cage corners cage. This is a horrible move right here because now the push leaves him in contact. So that <laughs> was a really bad move from that lineman. Um, has to block with our block and yeah, keeps the keeps the, the push keeps in contact. So again, just inviting pressure. Probably going to foul the witch elf for this dodge out. Doesn't. But I guess this shores up this a, this a little bit. But now, I mean, there's opportunities to to chain the witch into the cage somehow. A block here to get one dice on the ball. So there's there's kind of options here that that are open to the dark elves. They choose a. A blockless guy for just basically attrition blitz. Um, that's probably one of the few places you could go that wasn't a frenzy trap, I guess. So just rescuing, rescuing the witch elf to relevancy, um, as opposed to pushing for you know ball carrier blitzes or anything. But the problem with doing this is he hasn't got anything in front, so this is. This is still a pretty easy turn for Tiz to get forward here, I think. Again, rolling, rolling push pals. Uh, that's what, that's what Zons thrive on, isn't it? Oh, get powered. Hmm, I think I would have followed that pace at this point. So there's three guys free to move. And now there's four guys if you blitz. So yeah, blitz is here. Quite a big non-knockdown because a pow or a both down would have let the Zon go there and then had a five-man cage here, which I think is a lot better than having it one square to the left. But he didn't get the pow, so he couldn't do it. Yeah, 
obviously bog with a wrestle to get this one free. It would be unbelievably greedy to try and get the wrestle involved. So now he's in normal scoring range, so now it's now it's really scary for Andy Davo. Really, really scary, because now what do you even do here to make it not easy? <laughs> it's not easy to make it not easy. You could argue for a cage dive in the front, you know, one dice into a pill, because that's how desperate this situation is, really. In the end, he goes for the pecking the corner, un not unprotected, but blockless. Bases the ball. Gets the dodge in. It's a pretty big dodge fail, but he hasn't got a reroll. So now, this actually is an easy clear. And let's see what Tiss does wrong. <laughs> so, the first thing he does is move the guard in. And that is the worst thing he could have done. Because this guy could have gone here. Two dice block. Pushes him. And the guard goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Gets the guard in so that he can blitz and push the other guy. But because he's used the guard first for the first block. means he needs a power on it. And he does not get the power. And now he has no way of getting two dice on this guy. So that, that was an absolute mistake, 100%. Maybe it's what he should have done before making this blitz is, these guys can't move. Maybe he could have moved this, this character somewhere. Um, so, you know, kind of unlucky to 1 in 9, but it, it should have been, you know, he should have required a 1 in 81. Um, so, yeah, obviously just move the guard in, two dice on the ball, straight up. Gets it. Bit of an unfortunate scatter. Could have blitzed there. Could have could have dodged him in first. But I guess he wants to pass to him at the end. But you know, I think with no rerolls, you probably just move him in and then move him in and play it safer than you normally would. I think with a reroll that dodge was put that blitz was made up there. Ah, I don't know, it's hard to say, isn't it? He didn't have many turns left to score. Um and here Tis goes for, oh yeah, so he nearly got a surf, but he didn't choose not to. He could have gone for the surf, um, and it wouldn't really matter. He goes for the pickup handoff rather than pick up double GFI, which obviously results in a better failure state. Um, slightly worse odds of scoring, but only slightly. And he gets it, so... that It was really a thriller, um, you know, in real time. You know, lots of, lots of uh, I don't want to say mistakes by Tis, but yeah, a lot of a lot of kind of loose play. You know, he kind of left more of a door open than I think he should have or should or could have done in overtime. But that actually was down to Andy Davo's decision to use his reroll in the one turn, which you know it's such a low percentage chance. It was it was pretty crazy, and then it turned out, you know, with the quick snap, had he had he known how to do the movement seven one turn from one square forward, he would have actually made it in the end, as it turned out. But you know, you can't judge it on that. He was so lucky to get all the pushes he needed after using the reroll. Um, you know, it was a bit that was a bit crazy. If he'd had the reroll in overtime, maybe he would have won. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, Tis Tis won the roll off to see who received. If Andy David won the roll off, he would have likely won. So, as with most of the games, it's come down to that sort of that sort of thing. You know, dice are, are going to be crucial in you know when the coaching is relatively equal. So, congrats to Tiss and uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.